could have gotten the rights to Mike Tyson. Like the hardest boss in any NES game ever. Okay, so this is my Ready Player One spoiler talk. Honestly, I didn't plan on doing this and I was like, if ever there was a movie to do it, it'd be this one. There's a lot to talk about, a lot to unpack, a lot of references to reference. I'm not gonna talk about all the references, callbacks and nods, that would be impossible. I'm not saying no one's gonna do that. I'm saying there will be videos that do that. And to them I say, congratulations, your team did a great job. I have no team. I'm just me, so I'm gonna talk about some of the things I like. That's a solid spoiler warning if you haven't seen Ready Player One. Well, don't necessarily watch this, unless you want some spoilers, but I'm just saying, you've been warned. Really, at its core, this movie is the youth fights the corporation. They have to stick it to the men. It's also a message for, hey, governments, organizations, companies, just keep your shit out of our shit. You fucked this world up well enough, let's just let us have ours. But in the great Easter egg hunt, the first one comes from the racetrack. Which right there, I was like, that's a DeLorean, that's the Batmobile. Was Kit the Knight Rider car there? I don't know. I know the DeLorean had kind of the kit light in the front, but King Kong was really wrecking some folks after meeting the hottest game chick ever, which is, she's really, <laughs> that's a hot game chick. Which is funny when she's all sexied up and he's like, I'm in love with you, which I really didn't buy. I didn't buy the romance as much. But she's like, I don't look like this, you're gonna be disappointed. Then he meets and it's like, now nah, you're still cute. I mean, in terms of big reveal, there are a lot of people still crying from the AOL instant messenger of yesteryear. A lot of reveals people have experienced in life. It's not like this guy needs to get Neve and Max on the case. In a world where catfishing is real, I'm sure they'd be like, go home, you're drunk. It's it's fine. Point is, hot game girl became cute normal girl, and I think he's going to be okay. But the first key is found because he is a huge fanboy of this guy who created this world, played by Mark Rylance, which I didn't give him enough props in my review. That dude is so good. I just feel like when he's talking, I'm like, that's the embodiment of the person who would make this world. But he's like, if you go backwards in the race, you'll solve the puzzle. Which I don't know how no one thought of that before. In a world of trial and error, I know if I'm looking for all the paths I have in a racing game somewhere in my life, been like, what if you start backwards going nope it's not that at all but no one ever thought that that's like racing game easter egg 101 but again that world is very big it's not just a racing game i do want to know how no one knows when someone does something though is it like breath of the wild where someone can look from another racetrack and be like hey how do you get there? Let's trace it. I feel like the big douchebag corporation EA metaphor in this movie would have some sort of software that records everything that happens somehow. I don't know. Then again, there are probably fail safes in a cyber world that's kind of superseding the real world at that point. I do love when Ben Mendelsohn's character was talking to the kid and you're like, he actually knows a lot about these video games and pop culture. No, he doesn't. He got someone in his ear telling him the information. That's just how those companies are. It was just a beautiful representation of that corporate disconnect. But our heroes being rad, they realize, hey, the shining, that's where it is. That's where the next key is and I dude when that shining scene came on you could hear the theater gasping just like a bunch of cinephiles and critics are like oh. that was made constructed and tailored for movie critics a Stanley Kubrick film the greatest filmmaker of our time <laughs> but again if I'm picking shit apart in a world where obviously there are a lot of people who play this a lot of people who like video games a lot of people who probably like movies also no one ever said hey you can experience the shining let's do that with some friends because at that point when you go into that room and you see some lady dancing with zombies, you're gonna be like, something's off about that. I feel like I should, I should approach that. That's happened to me with games. I'm like, something's off about that thing. So I'm going to investigate more. Oh, look at that, it unlocked a shrine. Uh, judging by all the companies guys who were screaming in horror, you see them all dying when they're trying to do the shining challenge. Maybe not a lot of people would even want to try. I personally feel like it would be fun to experience VR Oasis style horror. I'd bring my Chucky doll along, I'd just throw it at the zombies. Which is probably my single favorite laugh out loud moment in here if I'm kind of getting ahead of myself right now. At the very end when it's an onslaught and a Nostalgia bomb war, and that Chucky doll flies at the camera, and that guy goes, Oh, it's fucking Chucky. Then you see the facility and everyone's turning red because this Chucky doll is just bouncing around everyone killing them. I'd have a Chucky doll, it'd be amazing. So let's assume our crew of heroes are the only ones who tugged on the shining thread in a world where you could go into the shining world. They get the second key. Then Ben Mendelssohn's like, all right, let's just kill his shitty family anyway. I wasn't really attached to the family at all. When they blew up, I was like, Congrats, kid. I feel like your life is just a little better for it. He even says, with all the ire he can muster, he's like, You killed my mom's sister. It's just not the same. You forgot her shitty, abusive, alcoholic, drunk boyfriend. I did know that character, what was it, H? I did know the big dude was a lady. And the voice is like, She could be a dude, man. You don't know. I'm like, it feels like you're probably not a dude. Feels like you're hiding your voice somehow. But among getting the third key, that is when shit gets real. That's when they have Ben Mendelsohn's character at gunpoint when he gets out of his VR world, but he's actually still in the Oasis. He's not in the real world. And the one thing I thought was like, I have seen that before. Star Trek Insurrection did that. Didn't last long there either. The episode Ship in a Bottle from Star Trek The Next Generation also did that. And that I think is the best representation of that. Point is, I was like, 
I've seen it. I mean, it's always cool when I see it because why would you not do that? But I've seen it. Doesn't change the fact that we saw a Hadouken. A Hadouken happened in here. It's gotta be one of the top three fighting game moves of all time, right? Top three? I mean, probably it's number one. My friends and I were quantifying the, the most famous and influential moves of all time. Special moves, not counting fatalities. Hadouken from Street Fighter, Scorpion Spear from Mortal Kombat or Van Damme Spear, depending on what you want to call it, depending on what area you come from. And Falcon Punch from Super Smash Brothers. Special props to the Dragon Punch, also from Street Fighter, since forward down forward punch resulting in an upward punch would be a mechanic seen in fighting games for decades afterward. Not only did we get Mecha Godzilla, but we got Mecha Godzilla versus Gundam. I mean, I've never seen Gundam in my life, so I'm not gonna posture like I have, I'm not gonna be like, I know everything about it, because I absolutely don't, but I do recognize the thing, because I see it a lot, and the audience was eating that shit up. That's what I like about this. It's fun to make Hot Toys displays or collectibles on your shelf and have them interact with each other in a way that you would never see on screen, but in this movie, in some form we did, that's a sweet celebration. That fight was pretty solid though, that Mecha Godzilla scene was real. Other than the fact that the Iron Giant's just blowing people away, which I feel like the Iron Giant had more weapons in the movie The Iron Giant. He never really used them. The Iron Giant was a weapon, so there were a lot of weapons on him. Why weren't those weapons pulled out? I don't know, I feel like that would have been a really good match for Mecha Godzilla. But yeah, crawl. That's what I'm talking about. In my review, I said there is a scene, a throwback, a nod, a reference where I was like, I didn't expect that because the weapon is rad. And that's the glaive from Kroll. That the thing, that star that he throws and that's the glaive. Coolest weapon ever. <laughs> Just control it. Kroll's rad. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> That sound scared the shit out of me as a kid. And I was like, why are lobsters popping out of their heads? Serenity made an appearance though. Anytime she makes an appearance, it's real. I wish they used Serenity more though, rather than just a drop off. The crowd running towards the battle though, man. I saw Battletoads, I saw Ninja Turtles, I saw Chun-Li. Pretty sure I saw Sonya Blade. The Ninja Turtles though, I was like, you could have gone for another model of Ninja Turtles. Just if I'm being realistic, three decades from now, do you really think we're all gonna reflect on those Ninja Turtles and be like, that? those are the quintessential Ninja Turtles? Nah. And side note, I would not hate it if NetherRealm Studios actually did a Ninja Turtles tournament fighter game. Just say, I'm putting it out there. Then when searching for the third key, when they were like, okay, Atari 2600's gotta be, I was like, all right, we're going to see Adventure. That's just the way this is gonna go down. I didn't know the third key would actually be in Adventure, though Adventure heavily deals with keys, had nothing to do with those keys. But all I know is when anyone says Atari 2600 game, I'm like, Adventure, the best one. It was so rad, so I was glad that they actually had Adventure be the big thing, though there is a reason that it was like, oh, there's Easter egg that's in Adventure that I learned about pretty recently. It's not about winning the game, it's about playing the game, but also winning. Does anyone really become a famous YouTube gamer, Twitch streamer, video gamer in general, because you played, but never won? I feel like winning matters at a point. I did love TJ Miller's character as a mercenary of some sort, which I do have to wonder, is like, can he just kill people that aren't engaged with him in combat? Does, does, does he have to be part of a game, part of a mission? Or can you just literally go to anybody and just blow them away? I mean, in Legacy of Kane, I used to go through with the Soul Reaver and just wipe out people in town. <laughs> I felt like a dick about it, but for some reason I did it. You don't just blow off steam in a shooter, be like, I gotta blow off steam and just kill people. It's what you're doing in Call of Duty, you're killing people. But there are rules, everyone in Call of Duty is there to kill and be killed. If you're just hanging out at a nightclub in this virtual world, can someone just kill you? Because I feel like natural selection style all the assholes would just kill off all the nice people and then you'd have a big combat zone everywhere. I guess that's unnatural selection still. You either you die nice or you adapt and become another asshole who can fight off the other assholes. Now that's not a Dark Knight reference, it's just reality. I do call bullshit on any online game having an attainable super bomb that will wipe out every user in the game. That's just that, what? I mean, from my recollection, that's what this bomb did. It killed every user in the game and it was completely acquirable. No, do you imagine if Blizzard had that in Warcraft, someone could actually get a super bomb. It's like, all right, bam, everyone's dead. Because someone would get it and someone would use it. Maybe the bomb is so expensive, it's only attainable through companies and Operations, in which case, that's just a recipe for disaster. You mean the sweet old man who apparently wants people to experience his nostalgic brain and escape their reality and come into a reality that he's crafted that's probably better than the other reality and it's just an escape for everybody? Would create a device that would blow everyone up in it? Nah. I love how a lot of reviews I've read or seen about this movie, a lot of people are like, I didn't know as much about the real world. I wanted to know more about the real world. I wanted to know more about how the online world worked. I didn't give a shit about the real world. I did love a TJ Miller's like, Dude, what? I thought you were bluffing, man. That's a total camper move. Dude. We are heading towards a future where terms like camp, that's a camper move, and other online gaming insults are actually going to be the insults of the times. So the bomb is used, wipes everyone out, then Wade Watts comes back because Ask Jeeves gave him a free life, and then he wins and everyone's super happy. But at that point, is he just like a god compared to every other user because they all lost their gear, but he didn't? Pretty sweet deal. But in the end, dude gets the Easter egg. This is where I would have failed. Even if I had solved everything and got the Easter egg at a point where the wizard is like, here, sign here, I'd be like, all right, I guess I have 
have to, you know, legally speaking. I would think the riddles are over. What would have happened if he had done it? Be like, oh, I'm sorry, you signed the legal piece of paper that seems perfectly logical that you have to do. I'm gonna put that in my magical pocket and you can go ahead and fuck off. My company will, I don't know, go to second place? What would have happened? I feel like there could be a strong argument for like, no, no, you said all I had to do was get the Easter egg and I got it. There was nothing about another challenge. Also your clues, Easter eggs, and your keys are obvious as shit. Guys, in the end, Ready Player One, like I said before, it was a great time. I know there are a lot of references I didn't actually talk about because there are so many. I mean, they're just kind of doing a flyby at this point. How much can you actually recall? This is actually, this movie should be a recollection test. It's difficult, it's hard, and that's why, right Recollection tests, they're actually a real test you could take. If it were easy or normal to do so, there wouldn't be tests. The point is, these are some of the things I like. I just wanted to get to the glaive, honestly. I wanted to tell you about the glaive. That's the point of this video. Talk about the glaive and then filler. I hope the filler was worth it for you. But I'll ask you again, Ready Player One, have you now seen it? Now that it's out, what did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.